Hello everyone, D Square here and welcome to my comic review. Today is a review and breakdown of Uncanny X-Men number 10, Disassembled Part 10. This is the conclusion of the story arc in which the X-Man is trying to remake and change the world with his godlike mutant powers. He seeks to make these changes before his death, which is imminent. This issue is a conclusion of the fight between the X-Man who is possessing Legion and fighting alongside his horseman, and of course the X-Men and former X-Men. This issue was a good showing of the X-Men coming together and highlighted Jean Grey and Psylocke, which is understandable because they have been focused on the most and made the most decisions in the series. I think that that is a highlight of this 10-part series. Jean and Psylocke are showing their leadership abilities. Anyone that's been paying attention to the X-Men comics as of late will attest that the female characters are really shining through and are instrumental in the X-Men storylines. What I don't like is the way this series concludes. It just was not satisfying. It feels more like a setup than anything. Of course it is. Don't get me wrong. I love for things to be properly set up, but it feels like there was no real payoff at the conclusion of this series. Overall, I felt like this was an exciting issue and series. It just falls a bit flat in the end. What saves it is that it is a setup. But honestly, I wanted to see a conclusion that maybe includes or leads up to a setup, but not a conclusion that was the setup. Okay, so here we go. I will now break down the last issue and conclusion to the X-Men Disassembled storyline. Thank you so very much, and I hope you enjoy. X-Men, otherwise known as Nate Gray, is dying. In his last days, he has used his omnipotent mutant powers to forcibly change the world into an ecological and sociological paradise. Needing followers, X-Man twisted Magneto, Blob, Omega Red, and eventually Storm into powerful avatars of his will, the Horsemen of Salvation. Legion, otherwise known as David Haller, foresaw X-Man's machinations and tried to avert them with the help of the X-Men. However, Legion and the X-Men were quickly overpowered and X-Man took over Legion's body. Terribly outmatched, X-Men leader Jean Grey sent out a telepathic distress call to all current and former X-Men to fight for their future. The Horsemen form a line in front of the X-Man in order to protect him from the horde of X-Men who wish to bring him down. The X-Man is unafraid and attacks the X-Men horde. He seeks to give them the battle they came for. As the battle rages between X-Man and his horsemen versus the X-Men and former X-Men, Jean Grey sends a psychic message to Psylocke the Cuckoos, Sage and No Girl. In this message, she details her plan for her and the other psychic-powered X-Men. She means to use her collective power to separate the X-Man from Legion while the rest of the X-Men buy them time. Psylocke agrees to Jean's plan, but decides they need to take out Storm first. Storm is doing major damage on the battlefield, and their plan is not likely to succeed while she is fighting for the X-Man. Psylocke has Archangel take her above and behind Storm. She is able to get the jump on Storm. Regrettably, Psylocke takes her psychic sword, then thrust it into Storm's head. They both fall toward the sea, but are saved by Archangel right before they hit the water. The X-Man's hold over Storm is no longer, and Storm is very upset at the X-Man's psychic violation of her mind. She storms off in anger, pun intended, and attacks the X-Man with all she has. At the same time, Psylocke joins Jean Grey and the other psychic X-Men in their attempt to use their psychic powers to separate X-Man from Legion. Storm unleashes a thunderous lightning attack on the X-Man. Jean and the other psychic X-Men are able to split the X-Men and Legion. The X-Man and Legion are separated and both are stunned or unconscious. Before they can celebrate or attack, Psylocke discovers that Jean has disappeared and is likely inside of the X-Man. Indeed, Jean Grey is inside the X-Man. 
The X-Man and Jean Grey go back and forth in conversation. Jean tries to convince the X-Man to abandon his crusade and work with the X-Men. The X-Man is trying to convince Jean that destroying the X-Men is the only way. Even if it causes a lot of pain, it'll be worth it in the end. Jean grabs him by the face and psychically shows him all the pain that his plan has caused. Jean's attack on the X-Man breaks his control on the remaining horsemen. They are now back to themselves in both body and mind. Magneto, Omega Red, and the Blob are not happy that the X-Man took them as puppets. The X-Man begs Jean to stop, and she relents in showing him the pain. The X-Man tells Jean that he was aware of this pain but had to do something to bring about peace as his last act. He explains to Jean that he received something called the Life Stone, that it increases his already Omega level mutant powers. At first he thought it would save him from dying, but alas it didn't, so he decided to try and save others. The X-Men and former X-Men, along with Magneto, Omega Red, and the Blob, unleash on the X-Man while Jean is still inside him. After a few more moments of talking with his mother, the X-Man decides what he must do. The X-Man simply says, Goodbye, X-Men, and then a bright flash. The X-Man is alone. His body is being washed over by waves from the sea. We see that his body is now gone, but the life seed remains, and is no longer in the possession of the X-Man. And just like that, they were all gone. Nobody knew what exactly had happened, and nobody really cared. All that mattered was everything he had done. Everything everyone had done was undone. The world was returning to the way it once was, like nothing had ever happened, save for one small difference. The X-Men were dead, and the whole world celebrated the deaths of those they had always hated and feared. History books were already being rewritten to erase the role of the X-Men. Senator Allen had a change of heart and publicly reversed his anti-mutant position, but it was too little too late. The world had had enough. Enough of homo superior, enough of mutant rights and mutant liberation, enough of the men who called themselves gods and enough of the ones who stood against them. The world had had enough of the children of the Adam, and enough of those children's children. Laws were passed to make sure never again would families have to suffer the tragedy of having a mutant child. The anti-mutant vaccine was put into immediate circulation. The age of mutants was coming to an end, not with a roar, but with a deafening silence. I can't help but think that someday, maybe years from now, but someday people will realize what we all lost. We just wanted to save the world from itself. Well, there we have it. That's how the X-Men Disassembled story concludes. No more X-Men. The X-Men won, it seems. But at the same time, I recognize the ruby glass wearing person on the last panel. So it does not look like all the X-Men are no more. Thank you for watching these videos. I want to now reflect upon the entire storyline and give you my thoughts and let you know what the next steps are from here. This is a radical change, almost like the you know mutant genocide with the uh, Scarlet Witch, you know, back in those storylines. It seems just mutant kind in the X Men are always just taking real big punches to the guts and near annihilation. And I'm sure many of you are aware that there is coming out Age of the X-Men comics. It's going to be X-Men comic. Um, I will be following that storyline. Seems like it continues on from here. But at the same time, 
they are going to continue with Uncanny X-Men number 11, which will have a new X-Men team, not entirely new, but it will be led by the resurrected Cyclops, and it will also have the original resurrected Wolverine. So I will also be following those uh, comics as well. If you're interested, you know, give me some feedback. If you're interested in getting reviews and breakdowns of those comics, or if you have any other suggestions, I would definitely, definitely love to hear them. But it seems like we are in some murky waters in the X-Men universe with the Age of X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men number 11. Uh, but I am excited for Cyclops and Wolverine's return to the X-Men and excited to see where they're going to go from here and really how does this affect the world at large. Uh, it seems like the normal Marvel 616 uh, Earth Prime, whatever you want to call it, reality um, seems like they will have less mutants but then there's going to be a parallel perfect mutant uh, reality so definitely uh, going to be interesting stuff and would just love to hear your thoughts in the comments you know as always if you haven't already or if you feel so inclined please give me a like subscribe and all that great stuff thank you very much for uh, joining me along this journey I really appreciate it and I want you to just have a great one thank you so much